So I'm living in Ireland almost three years now. Well, specifically two and a half years. And it's Christmas season. And one of the things I haven't dared to make yet is a Christmas cake. A Christmas cake is a lot of dried fruits covered with a fondant or marzipan and soaked with whiskey or juice. I'm also not the biggest fan of dried fruit cakes, but my mince pie did turn out quite lovely and I figured it might be worthwhile trying out if I can make this traditional Christmas dessert gluten-free. recipes. One is from Recipe Thin Eats, which is an American recipe, and then I found an authentic Irish recipe. I'm not quite sure if there's just one authentic Irish recipe, I'm sure there are several of them, but I'm going to use this. And when I compare both recipes, one thing is striking. The Irish one has certainly much more whiskey than the American one. So I'm going to start with my cherries. And I want 150 grams chopped. By the way, I'm not a big fan of clay shot cherries or clay's cherries. That always reminds me as a kid, we went to, um, to the Italian ice cream parlor and on the top of my ice cream was this weird cherry, which tasted funny. So I'm not a big fan of it. And then I'm going to transfer them to a bowl. I need 180 grams of pitted dates. And yeah, luckily they are already pitted. So this is 200 grams of dates and again I want to dice them. So here are my cut dates and I'm going to add them now to my cherries. So that's now 350 grams of dried fruit. If I add now another 200 grams of apricots it will make it 550 grams. Here are my cut apricots and I'm going to add my apricots now to my dates, my cherries and the other things. So the last thing I'm missing is to add another 300 grams of other dried fruits and I'm going to go with 150 grams of raisin and 150 grams of sultans. So here's my 850 grams of dried fruits. I have to add now the most important ingredient and that is the Irish whiskey. And, you know, I like to add always for good measure a little bit of extra whiskey. Mm, here's my delicious Irish whiskey and I'm going to add half a cup. So I'm going to mix that now. I'm going to cover now my fruit mix and I'm going to let it sit overnight so the dried fruits can absorb all that delicious whiskey. I forgot one thing. I need to add some mixed peels to my dried fruits. So here's my mixed peel. And I want to add about 100 grams of mixed peel to my dried fruits. I'm going to mix this. And now, seriously, I'm going to put the dried fruits aside and really let it rest overnight. I have to start to make the batter for my fruit cake. So I'm going to measure now 60 grams of butter and I'm going to add 50 grams of oil. I normally substitute some butter or butter substitute with oil because gluten-free cakes tend to dry out a teeny little bit more than a regular cake does. And oil really helps of keeping it moist. So I misread the recipe and I really need 120 grams of butter or butter substitute. So I added already 60, so I need another 60. And then it's talking about 120 grams of oil, so that's a lot of oil. So I already added 50 grams, so I need to just add another 60 grams. I should really start reading the entire recipe before I start baking, I think. And I'm going to measure 300 grams of dark brown sugar. I'm also going to add three tablespoons of molasses. And apparently molasses in Ireland is called trickle. It just took me two years to figure it out and I was hunting around Dublin to find molasses and then found American molasses, which was certainly very overpriced. Duh, those things you learn when you just move. 
I'm also gonna add half a teaspoon of salt, three eggs, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and I need to add about 200 grams of flour. So I'm going to use for that my pound cake flour combination and I'm going to add that now to my combination. So where the recipe thin eats and the Irish cake recipe differ is in the spices. So the Irish one wants the peel of a lemon and of an orange. And then we have again nutmeg, glove and ginger and mixed spice. And the ratios are different but about the same. Hmm, what am I going to do? I definitely like the peel of a lemon or orange in it because that just adds a little bit more flavor to the cake. And that's more or less the peeled lemon. Here's my orange. So that's almost the peel of a lemon over orange. And I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of spices. So half a teaspoon of clove, half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg and now I have to find ginger. I found my ginger and I'm gonna add now half a teaspoon of ground ginger and the recipe is also asking for all spice. I have mixed spice. I wonder if there's a difference. Well <clears throat> we'll see. I did taste it. It doesn't taste like garlic or onion so that's good. So I hope it is mixed spice. And then the recipe talks about adding two tablespoons of whiskey. Well, the Irish recipe does, not the American one. Which is a pity. And I'm gonna put three tablespoons. Good man. And I'm supposed to add 50 grams of almond flour. And I'm gonna use now my handheld blender to combine the ingredients. And now I'm gonna add my dried and soaked fruits and I can smell the whiskey. Mmm. So now I have to fold my dried fruits under. And here's my Christmas cake combination. I have to put it now into a baking form. So I'm going to quick line the cake form. And I'm going to pour the cake now into my lined baking form. Here's my unbaked Christmas cake. And apparently you have to bake a Christmas cake for three hours. And I do have to check on the temperature at 300 degree Fahrenheit. Let's pop the puppy into the oven for three hours. That's a really long time. So here is my baked pudding. And I compared the American recipe with the Irish recipe. And certainly, what a surprise, I should inject on a weekly basis a little bit of whiskey into my Christmas cake. The American recipe does not make the same recommendation. Am I surprised? Not really. So I'm gonna add a little bit of my fancy whiskey into a jar or ramekin. And I have a syringe. So I'm gonna use my syringe and suck up the whiskey. So I'm gonna poke a hole in here inject a little bit, find another hole, inject a little bit more. I want to cover the cake though also with some marzipan. So what I want to do is, I want to certainly release the cake and when I took it out I used one of my cake knives to release it from the edge of the cake. And now I want to release the cake. And here's my remaining marzipan. It's now just down to a third of my original amount. So I put some powdered sugar on my working area. That normally would prevent the marzipan from sticking to it. So I'm gonna knead the marzipan again. Make one big marzipan. Now I have to roll out the marzipan and then I'm gonna roll the marzipan onto my rolling pin. And then I want to unroll the marzipan onto the top of my cake. Oh, that didn't quite work out. And then I'm going to pull again the edges down of the cake. And then I'm going to cut again the edges. And here's my Christmas cake. 
I'm wondering if I should have like cut the top of it just to make it a little bit smoother looking. I wonder what happens if I try to roll it out. Huh, interesting. It does make it look a little bit smoother. So I wanted also to cut out some leaves as decoration. So I still have some green marzipan left from my princess cake. And I'm thinking I can use that for my leaves. So I'm gonna roll out my green marzipan and use my cookie cutter to cut out a few leaf shapes. And I'm gonna start decorating now the edges. And I need a little bit of moisture to have it actually stick to the cake. So I'm gonna use a little bit of my whiskey for it. And then for the leaves, I normally like to make a little bit of impression that it's a leaf, so I'm gonna use my knife. And now I need a little bit of red marzipan. I have the feeling I won't get it to the red I like, so I might have to paint my red again. And I want to have small little red fruits. So I'm going to make a marzipan string, cut it in pieces and roll out some mini balls. And I'm going to add some red food coloring. Here we go. This has some nice red colors. And I'm going to let them rest now overnight, just that the color can soak in. I'm also not 100% happy with the coloration, so I was thinking maybe with some of the toothpicks I can add a little bit more color to it. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, this looks much better. And I'm going to let it dry overnight as well. So here are my red colored berries. And I'm going to pick it up with a toothpick and put it now in the middle. You might want to dip them a little bit into water as well, just to make sure it sticks. So here's almost the finished cake. I don't want to put some more almonds around it as decoration. And to have the almond stick to the marzipan, I'm going to put some honey on it. Before I'm going to add the almonds to the top of my marzipan cover. And the last thing left is to dust a little bit of powdered sugar to the top. And here's my finished Christmas cake. And I gave the fruitcake to a good friend of ours and she told me that she and her uncle really enjoyed it and that it was a very delicious fruitcake. So yay to my first fruitcake success! I hope you enjoyed today's show and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye.